What is going on, YouTube? Fascinating graveyard. Today we are at the Fairlawn Cemetery here in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. We're here to visit the grave of Edward Capehart O'Kelly. He is the man who is known as the man who killed the man who killed outlaw Jesse James. Let's get right into it. Before we begin, uh, if anybody is ever in the Oklahoma City, Oklahoma area, definitely stop by this place and check it out. Uh, this is the oldest cemetery here in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Now let's get right into the story. So I ain't gonna lie, there's not a whole lot of information about this guy's grave that we're gonna visit today, uh, one Edward Capehart O'Kelly. Uh, he was born October 1st, 1857 in Harrisonville, Missouri. And um, his life is really a blank. I mean, old stories like this, sometimes there's really good documentation on the lives of certain people, depending on if those people who were alive back in those days wanted to just write about their family and keep a, a really good set of logs and records. So eventually, uh, Edward, growing up as a child, a teenager, a young adult, he moves out west to the wild, wild west. Now, let's talk a little bit about the wild, wild west. So when we were still kind of making our way out west, uh, there was no laws out there in uh, the west part of Texas, New Mexico, uh, Utah, Colorado, Arizona, all that stuff. There were no laws. So for instance, uh, let's say you lived in Alabama and uh, let's say you killed your father, you guys got drunk and you, and you shot him, you were 15 years old. Well, the sheriffs or the deputies, they're gonna come and arrest you and charge you with that murder. Now, your mother, maybe she left her son and she would tell you, go out west. They'll never catch you over there because when you go out west, there's, no, there's really no laws. You do have some you know, deputies but basically, the West was a place to go to where you wanted to disappear and you could totally start a whole new life. You could change your name, uh, pick up a new trade, and just totally disappear and no one will ever hear from you ever, ever again. And oftentimes, that's exactly what happened. Uh, sometimes people would go out there to become cowboys. Uh, you go out there and you would become uh, a blacksmith. Well, Edward, he went out there and he became a lawman. Uh, he first got a job as a town marshal uh, in Bachelor City, Colorado, which is where he ended up uh, choosing. Don't know why he chose Colorado over anywhere else, but that's where he uh, decided to start a career in law enforcement. And later on, after being the town marshal in Bachelor City, uh, he became the deputy for Hinsdale County. Now, the only information about his character that I can see online is that this guy had a short temper. Uh, how short was his temper, you're asking me? Well, I'm going to tell you exactly how short it was. Uh, he once killed a man simply for accidentally stepping on his feet. <laughs> yeah, this guy, uh, he liked to drink and he had a very, very short temper. Now, after leaving law enforcement, um, became more of just like I guess you can call it a has-been a has-been who drank too much right now you know you got the movie uh, you know movies in Hollywood that will um, depict how it happened how he decided to kill Bob Ford if in case you don't know who Bob Ford was um, I did a video quite some time ago on my other channel uh, I'll, I'll link the video in the description box below of uh, Bob Ford, or who's known as the cowardly Bob Ford. Uh, Bob Ford uh, was the man that shot Jesse James in the back of the head uh, simply to uh, collect a uh, reward for his capture. So anyways, so Bob Ford, known as cowardly Bob Ford, uh, decided, you know, to make his way out west. So they go to a... Uh, Bob Ford settles in a place called Creed uh, in Colorado, and he opened up a bar there. And, uh, you know, became a, I guess, an honest businessman, so to speak. Probably not honest, but you know what I'm saying. Just tried to start an honest business. And uh, that whole downtown area of Creed, I don't know how, 
but uh, a lot of it got caught on fire, including his bar. So his bar burns down. He comes out the next day. He's like, oh, crap. So he just basically pitches a tent and, you know, moves everything that he can be saved into the tent. So on that day of when uh, Bob Ford was killed by uh, Mr. O'Kelly, I guess in that movie, I forgot what movie it was, where he's just like, hello, Bob. And he walks into his tent. Now, we don't know if he actually said, hello, Bob. We don't know if he called out his name. Hey, Robert Ford. Uh, that is uh, that is hearsay. I, I really don't know. Uh, all I know is that he walks into the tent, pulls out a double barrel shotgun, and shoots him right in his neck. Bam! And basically, uh, he's killed instantly. No more Bob Ford. You know, what goes around absolutely comes around in cases such as that. Now, here's the question that I want to ask. And I'm sure some of you guys out there are kind of wondering, why did Edward, why did he kill Bob Ford? Now, that's also a topic up for discussion because anybody and everybody is going to say one of two things. They're going to say that... Uh, he wanted revenge for some form or fashion. Uh, there's also a rumor that possibly because just him wanting some kind of recognition, you know, because, you know, you were law enforcement and your temper got the best of you and you're no longer a deputy. Maybe he wants to kind of relive some kind of uh, power or prestige, whatever you want to call it. So maybe he killed him because he thought that, oh, if I kill that coward, Bob Ford, everybody will love me. Bob Ford never did anything to uh, Edward O'Kelly. So he kills him. And instead of him, you know, a parade being held in his honor, this guy is arrested and charged with his murder and he's sentenced to life in prison. This is the grave of Edward Cape Ho Cape Hart O'Kelly. Uh, the man who killed the man who killed Jesse James. See, on his on his grave, the birthday says December 1858, but online it says October 1st, 1857. So who knows? I mean, like I said, back in those days, you, you don't know what's going on. The man who killed the man who killed Jesse James. Oklahoma Outlaws Lawman History Association. So somebody left a shot glass for him because he loved to drink. And uh, this is, of course, a newer stone. So we're going to go leave this grave for now. And we're going to go continue on to what happened to uh, Mr. Uh, O'Kelly and how, he, uh, how his life ended. So he's sentenced to uh, life in the Colorado State Penitentiary. So he's there, um, and there is a public outcry to release him. I mean, because let's not forget, even though he did kill a man, it was Bob Ford and everybody hated him because, you know, he shot somebody in the back of the head. He's a coward. So there was a petition that received 7,000 signatures. Now, you're the head of a state penitentiary in Colorado in the late 1800s. You're not going to release somebody just because a bunch of people signed a piece of paper. But uh, they released him after only serving nine years. I believe they lowered his sentence from life to 18 years. And then they just released him after him doing the nine years. I'm pretty sure, however, more than likely, he was, uh, he was, um, what do you call it? Uh, he was released because he had some kind of undisclosed medical condition. And I'm sure the prison really didn't want to deal with it. That's what I'm thinking. So he's released and he makes his way out here to Oklahoma. Now he's released and, you know, he's hanging out in Oklahoma City in kind of like the slummy bar area. And he had um, the attention, he had the attention of the Oklahoma City police. They kind of knew who he was, of course, because he murdered a, a man in Colorado who killed Jesse James. But for some unknown reason, they thought that he was the leader of some a gang of hooligans. Now, whether he was or not, is totally hearsay. 
So in December of 1903, Edward was arrested uh, for, uh, I guess, suspicion of robbery. He was arrested by a police officer with the Oklahoma City Police Department by the name of Joseph Burnett. Okay. Not sure how long he stayed in jail for. He's arrested. He gets out. And I guess you can kind of understand that he probably felt that he was arrested unjustly. I don't know. This character already had a past that he brought with him from Colorado uh, to here, Oklahoma City. So the police, they really wanted to pin something on him. Now, I don't know why they had such a thing for this guy. Um, I'm guessing it was just because of his uh, past, if you will. Uh, but they kept a pretty close eye on him to the point where even if he was committing crimes, uh, he wouldn't be able to because they were always following him uh, in the slum area of Oklahoma City from one bar to the next. Uh, wherever he was, there was always a cop uh, right next to him just kind of keeping an eye on him from a safe distance. You fast forward to January of 1904. Edward is arrested yet again by a different uh, police officer, but he's released uh, really quickly. Maybe they're harassing him because maybe they just don't want him in their town. I don't know. So the day or so later after he gets out of jail, he's walking down the street and guess who he sees? He sees, uh, he sees Joseph Burnett, the guy that arrested him uh, the previous month. And I'm, uh, I'm assuming that uh, Officer Burnett was not uh, on duty because what transpired next would indicate to me that he was not on duty. So. Burnett says, hello, Edward. Now, you know, did he say it like sarcastically? Like, hello, Edward, I just arrested you. Ha ha ha. I don't know. But the story goes is that he says, hello, uh, Edward. And Edward says, probably F off or something like that. So the words were exchanged, I'm assuming. They start fighting and they're tussling in the street. I mean, they're all over the place. They're tussling, they're wrestling, they're fighting. Somebody's screaming. And everybody that was a witness to what happened, nobody's jumping in. They're just looking at these two guys fighting. They probably just think it's a couple of guys getting into an argument and nobody wants to get involved. Now, if I'm, I'm guessing, I'm assuming that if he was in uh, his uniform, I'm guessing that, a, you know, some people would have jumped in and tried to, you know, break up the fight. So all of a sudden, Joseph, who is uh, fighting for his life because all of a sudden now Edward pulls out a gun and starts firing. Now he's kind of firing, he's trying to blow this guy's head off, but the bullets are whizzing by his ear, but the bullets are coming so fast that some of his clothing and his ear got singed from the muzzle blast of uh, the gunfire. So finally, one of the employees of a nearby uh, railroad station, I think it was across the street, he comes running by and he grabs Edward's hand. And that freed up Officer Burnett to reach into his uh, pants and pull out a uh, weapon and he shot Edward twice once in the knee and once in the side of the head uh, pretty much killing him instantly and there was an inquest into uh, what happened but um, Officer Burnett was cleared of all charges because there was plenty of witnesses watching this fight and of course you're an officer of the law, and this guy is a criminal scumbag. Uh, this is the grave of Joseph C. or G. G. Burnett. I think the G stands for Grant. August 24th, 1867 to July 20th, 1917. Uh, so he was cleared of all wrongdoing, and he ended up continuing his career of law enforcement. Uh, and he made it all the way up to uh, assistant chief of police of the Oklahoma City uh, Police Department. And on July 20th, 1970, 1917, excuse me, he died of a stroke at the age of 49. So uh, both, uh, both uh, men are buried at the Fairlawn Cemetery. I'm going to guess if I'm walking just like this, let's say, let's say I'm standing at the grave of Mr. Burnett, Officer Burnett. If you walk two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, about fifteen paces up, and where that white SUV is over there, 
Uh, that is where uh, we just visited Edward Capehart O'Kelly, the man who killed the man who killed Jesse James. That's the story in a nutshell. I hope you guys enjoyed it. A lot of these old stories I love doing, just not a whole lot of information. A lot of it's kind of like eh, fuzzy memories. Needless to say, rest in peace to both men. It was a crazy time back in those days, and oftentimes when I read these older stories and just these, you know, all these crazy stories, Billy the Kid, Doc Holliday, you know, Wyatt Earp, but just, I, I always in my mind anyways, imagine what life would be like back in the uh, olden days of Wild Wild West. No air conditioning, no cars, it must have been a very, very rough life, and smelly too. Not everybody bathed every day. You know, those days, you know when you bathe? <laughs> on Saturday. You would bathe on Saturday for church on Sunday. <laughs> then, you know, by Thursday, Friday, you're like, uh-oh. That's exactly how it was done. But I'm sure the rich people, you know, they could, you know, afford to take a bath every day. Just have people boil their water for their bath or whatever. Interesting times. Okay, guys, I hope you found this uh, video informative or what have you. And uh, I will catch up with you on the next vlog, wherever that might be. Until next time.